Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie. Hey, good morning. I'm Candace. Welcome back. Well, we had a good night last night. We went to the concert and they played for three hours. Yeah. It the, was amazing. We went to the Cure concert, by yeah. the way, for those of y'all that are just tuning in. Um, yeah, they, they played three. I couldn't believe how long. Well, I could because I've seen like old um, YouTube videos from the past few years of shows and they played about three hours in those too so i think that's just what he does yeah so the opener went on at seven at seven and then they played like 45 minutes and there's about a 15 minute break the cure went on at eight and they didn't leave stage till uh 11 actually they did two of the fake they did two small breaks not even just a few minutes each. no it was it was like two minutes yeah where they go in and the crowd begs for them to come back out and then they come out but that was planned and they i think they just do that every time yeah. so it was amazing though it was re like really good mm -hmm. yeah. i i can't believe how good robert smith is still at yeah, uh his voice still sounds great he's 64 years old and i mean to go to sing for three hours now we were talking about it and we're good we're gonna cut this short soon but um we're just still, ah, you know, they're, whenever they play their songs, each song they do like a one or two minute instrumental um, intro. Yeah. And I told Lonnie, that's that's probably to like kind of let his voice rest so, so yep. he can keep sounding amazing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I, I still can't believe how good he sounds. Well, I could because again, I've watched plenty of live shows on YouTube, but how does he sound so good at this age and then most acts you go see live or i've seen live young people <laughs> young people they don't sound good now because they're all auto-tuned they don't sound like what you hear on the radio but i mean even before auto-tune it yeah. used to be like that you know yeah. but robert smith like there comes along some artists that just sound exactly like their recordings and you remember um we we saw alanis morissette once live and that blew me away she is just so good live you yeah know? Yeah. Just some artists that they just have it, you know. The really cool thing, the the and then we'll move on with, with reselling. The really cool thing is I really felt like Robert Smith cared that he did a good performance for all these people that paid to see him play. Yeah. That's the way it felt. Yeah. And he's like very humble, kind of like just mm -hmm. very polite. Like he they would kill it, crowd would crowd would go nuts, and then he'd go, Thank you. And then he would do another song and then he would do it again. Thank you. Yeah. He was so shy or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was great fun. If you ever if y'all have the chance, because that was the first that was the first date of the North American tour. If you're a Cure fan, obviously, and you have the chance, you need to go see them. Yeah, if you can still get tickets. Yeah. Yeah. If you have if you have a lot of money and can like, afford it. We to. were way up in the nosebleeds. We couldn't even we could we couldn't see him, you know. No, we couldn't see him but very well. It still was fun. Yeah, yeah. it was great. All right, we have, um, it is kind of late too. We didn't get in. It, the show was in New Orleans and I, I told Candace on the way back, I'm like, I feel like I worked an eight hour day. I was tired. I didn't do anything but watch the show. We I can't left here at four and to get home till after midnight. Yeah. It was like 1230. It was like an eight hour day for us. Yeah. Just after, after we worked all day. Yeah. So, uh, we have, I think we have 10 orders on eBay. Yep. And. And then we have three orders on Macari. So Macari's really picking up eBay slack today. Yeah. So pick and, it up. And eBay. they're not all dolls on Macari, believe me. No, you. only one doll. Yeah. All right, first item is a Walmart pin 112. Another thing, I think they played, I think the Cure played like, what, four quote unquote new songs yeah and the rest of, they played all the hits yeah they played all the hits there, there might be a couple of songs they didn't have time to play but which one is it 112 112 it's a bumblebee and says be the difference yep be the difference uh, how do they do a b and then not spell b two with I, two e's that's yeah, crazy I to thought, me i thought that was weird that's all for nine dollars okay On nine Charlie, we sold a hat. Team Sizzler. <laughs> Team Sizzler. Uh, I knew somebody would buy this hat eventually. You said Charlie? Nine Charlie. Okay. Oh, it's right here. Let's see it. That's from the Sizzler 
Or steakhouses. Like that, an employee hat. That's got to be like 90s, huh? Look. It's made in Taiwan. I think it's probably 90s, right? Yeah. That's all for $17. Uh, five Bravo Clio Denial. I think I have to cut one out for you. Let me, let me go look. Okay, well, yeah. We'll come back to that. Okay. After the first round. Uh, we sold, an, uh, I think the last catcher's mask, 10 Echo Mask B. Yeah, I believe that is the last one. Look, Kance, so we got a big old hole for inventory there. Yep. Yep, Mask B. That That's all for $13.50. Yep. One Foxtrot White Converse Tennis Shoes. All the way down there. Probably all the way in the back too. I don't remember seeing them lately. Here they are. Those are in good shape. Yep. They sold for twenty. Okay. Dracula B. I know you have that one ready. Got her. Sold for thirty. A nine echo a Frankie Stein. Right. Here we go. That's the girl with the foam finger. <laughs> yep. That's all for fifteen. All right, we sold a pair of shoes E two. They're gonna be on this side. Okay. Size eight black. I'm getting to the point where I'm not, I know I don't have to go up on a step stool every time. Yeah. Um, we've got some more stuff to pull. Why don't we go ahead, let me just go ahead and start packing this. And I'll get those dolls ready for you. And then we have some more pulls too. Yeah. Okay. All right, I got all that stuff packed here. And Candace got a few more dolls ready. Yep. Go ahead and pull your Cleo. Pull my, everybody pull your Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> Where was she at again? Five, Five bro. Bravo. Five Bravo. All right. <laughs> All righty. All right, and then uh, she sold for twelve fifty nine. We sold some football shoulder pads. It says up. It's some shoot extra large. Yeah, these guys right here. These are awesome. Like these, the condition on these were so good. That's Varsity XV. Yeah. What is that? Fifteen. XV. Huh? XV is that fifteen? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you mean uh, Roman numerals? Roman numerals? Yeah, it would be if that's what they're doing there. Yeah. They sold for one hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, I think we paid ten dollars for these at a garage sale, and I could find no sign that they had ever been worn. So. All right, we have another Cleo for twelve fifty nine. She is oh the same place. All right, and then all we have, all we should have left is Mercari. That's correct. All right, first item on Mercari is a Doom action, uh, Doctor Doom action figure unmasked variant. He is on CC five. Kind of looks like Robin Hood. Does he? <laughs> oh, he does. You're right with yeah. that that garb on. He sold for eighteen uh, plus ship. No, it's free, free ship. ship. Yeah, these this is one of the ones I did free shipping on. Yeah. So we basically we got something like fourteen dollars plus shipping on top of yeah. what it would be like. In the tiger drawer, we saw some American Girl jeggings. In the where? Tiger? Tiger. They are denim looking leggings. And this is also a free ship. Yes. Because it was a... $12 free ship. Same thing. So we basically got like 8 or $9 for these. All right. And then the last item on Mercari is a Frankie Stein. She's on nine... Uh, nine echo. This one only goes down to echo. That is foam finger, right? Yep. 
She sold for 15 plus ship. Alrighty, so that plus that and that is everything that sold yep. um, in the last 24 hours or so. So I'm going to get this stuff packed and get that stuff out so I can go ahead and get those shoulder pads packed. I haven't exactly... Those are going UPS. So those, yeah, they're, those will get packed last. Yeah, they're going UPS. I think I should have just the right box for that. All right, got all the USPS stuff packed and it all fits into an Ikea bag. 12 items in there. And then still have to pack this guy, which is super easy. Okay, this is how I'm packing the shoulder pads. I bagged it first. I love these clear bags. We've got two sizes of clear bags. We have the smaller ones like that that we use for a lot of clothing and hats and other how many, stuff. How many gallon is that small size? And we've had a few people ask us what kind of bag. How many gallons? Let's see. These are clear trash bags. Those are 10 gallon 10 gallon HDX waste basket waste basket trash bags and they're pretty cheap. Yeah, those actually came from Home Depot. Yeah. Now the bigger ones we got from Amazon and I'll look that up real quick to see what size they are. Yeah, they're big. Yeah. They're large. We just keep them in under the bench there. And like uh we shipped an expensive piece of luggage the other day uh, I used two of those big bags to protect that stuff but um, this is a Home Depot medium box and I already used the box resizer to score around there and then I cut up there thank you card and then now it's just a matter of folding it all down and taping it up and that's done so that's like a five minute pack on something that probably looks a little imposing to some of y'all. All right, all the packages are away. And well, the USPS is anyways. Candace is going to bring, she's going somewhere later on for Girl Scouts. Man, it seems like we're constantly saying Candace has Girl Scouts something or another. During the school year, it's usually at least once every other week we have something going on. Now, during the summer, we don't, you know. That's weird because that's when the girls have more free time to do stuff. I know, but families go on vacations and you have Girl Scouts has summer camp and there's other camps. Yeah. You know, there's just... Summer's not as long as it used to be either, so... No, it's like... Well, this, well we're supposed to get out May 26th. They, the kids are getting out a week earlier here because... What the school board here does is set aside um, days for disasters or our, our Yankee, we weather. Our Yankee friends will understand because uh, they have snow days up there. So the off snow days, ours are set aside for like hurricanes and stuff. So this year, none of them were used. So the kids are getting out a whole week earlier. So this year they're getting out on May 19th. Usually they get out the last Friday in May, which this year would have been the 26th. And then they go back like the very first week in August. So um, just a little over two months. Yeah. yeah. I, it seems like it used to be like a full three months when I was a kid. Yeah. May, I, know, I, don't know. I know up north or in other, a lot of parts of the country, they don't go back till after Labor Day. But I don't know how far in, into the year they get out. Like yeah. is it more like June after Memorial Day. So... Yeah. Well, uh, I am. Well, this is something I said I was going to do yesterday, but we were we were headed to New Orleans, and we wanted to make really sure that we didn't get caught in traffic or something, and ended up missing the concert or something like that. So we left super early. It was. Well, let's see. We left at four, mm -hmm. and we didn't have the concert didn't start till seven. We got there about a quarter till six. But you have to be careful, like, driving into New Orleans when the traffic's bad it is not moving. Right. So, it's either get there early or take a chance and be late for the concert. So... Yeah. So, what ended up happening was um, I had to edit video yesterday for sure because I knew I wasn't going to want to edit video when we got home last night. And then I never got around to actually cross-posting all the stuff. I pulled it all into List Perfectly um right here you can see i'm doing 11 right now 
And uh, I'm actually cross posting the Macari now. The I think it was 65 things from two weeks ago. And we're gonna see how that goes. I mean, I I, I think it's gonna be a success. How many you have done? I don't know, about 30 something now. Yeah. So I'm taking the time to actually uh, get all 65 of these things cross posted. I'm really, I'm pretty optimistic that this is going going to result in a lot of extra sales. Now, what it's probably going to mean is on Wednesdays, I'm probably not going to list a ton or much right. other than doing this cross posting. But like the way I look at it, this is listing. Sort of. You know? If it results in extra sales, it doesn't yeah. matter. It yeah. does matter, actually. I mean, you are a listing. It just happens to already be formatted for you. Right. You know? Yeah, I agree. It I doesn't agree. go into our listing totals or anything, you know, but uh, yeah. If it results in more sales, that's what we want. So, uh, yeah, I've got my list perfectly window open here. No, open over here. I've got eBay open here and I kind of track, uh, I kind of keep my eBay listing pay listing, um, in line with where I'm currently cross posting at. So if I need a weight or something, I could just go into that, go into that listing and check out the weight or whatever and see how much, because on some of them, like if I know I'm going to go, um, if I know I'm going to probably end up using like parcel posts or something like that, uh, I'd rather just do I pay shipping and do free shipping on some of those. And then do pirate ship. And then do pirate ship. Now all of the, um, all the smaller stuff like these razors here, that's all going to be uh, first class via Macari labels. Also, any media like book, like media mail stuff, that's all Macari labels. Uh, what else? What else is there? Oh, cards yeah. are going to be Macari labels because they have the comparable to eBay standard envelope. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to knock these out, and then we have a uh, we got a good question the other day that we want to we want to cover here in the video about best right. offer. We already yeah. did returns. Best offer is what we're talking about That's today. Right. All right, I got all the stuff uh, cross posted. I'm actually working on some hats now that were cross posted to Poshmark, but not Mercari yet. So I went ahead and I'm gonna finish that off. And then moving forward, I might do. I might look back and see like on a weekend and look at older listings and see like older than a couple of weeks old. See if it makes sense to, to cross post them. Right, but it probably I won't spend too much time on that. Or if it's something you know, you know that's not already cross posted. Right. That's, I know we didn't do this. That's the problem. Is that at this point I've done like I've cross like we have 1,900 and something listings on eBay. I've cross posted about 400 of them. But not all of them, obviously, because there's like 1,500 that aren't cross-posted. So I really think just for sanity's sake, moving forward is the way to go and yeah. just catch the ones. That was my thought, because if, if we didn't figure out some system, then it would never get done. Right. I could see that happening. It's better not being a completionist about it and right. just moving forward, we do it. Yeah. That's There's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Well, I've been working on cookbooks today and... Um, no heavy hitters. And then uh, I pulled out these rollers we bought at that estate sale last weekend. I paid two fifty for it, and I'm uh, I'm gonna get either thirty five or forty for them. So okay. yeah, I mean a lot of people sell them for twenty five thirty, and they don't even have the pins, you know. Or I saw one that sold for like thirty, and this was all cracked up. The lid was all cracked up. And they called it cosmetic. Cosmetic damage. <laughs> yeah. That's not cosmetic when it's literally yeah. broken. Right. A cosmetic, cosmetic, to me, cosmetic damage is like if there's like a scuff or a scratch. Or like, yeah, like the poles here have sc scratches right. on them. Just exactly. the paint is wearing off. That's, That's cosmetic. Yep. I agree. Um, yeah, but not like a break or a crack. Yeah. Um, so we had a viewer question that we thought was interesting. And the reason I thought it was interesting is because it's something I've been thinking about revisiting uh, lately and I just haven't, haven't, haven't really talked to Candace about yeah, it. Yeah, you haven't shared that little bit of information with me. Well, we've got too much, we've got so much Surprise. going on. Well, it's not that big of a <laughs> deal. <laughs> it's not, like you would talk to me before you actually did it. 
I just think it's funny that you've been thinking about it and then we got a question. Well, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do yet. Yeah. You know? So this question is from Susan E.S. I noticed you guys rarely list your items with make offer now. Should I remove that from my listings? Well, first off, we're never going to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't do no. because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's store is different. Your inventory dictates a lot of this stuff, honestly. Right, right. Like, like if you have if you have gold, you know, gold bricks you're selling, no, you shouldn't. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but if you've got, I don't, if you've got beanie babies and, and stuff you're selling, maybe so, right? Yeah. And so, so what what do you think about well, best offer on eBay? The way I feel about it, the people that really want something for less, like they they really want it, they go ahead and message us anyway with offers. So it's kind of like we're accepting them anyway. We're just not advertising it. Right. And uh, okay, here here here's my I, I thought about this quite a quite a bit over the years. And to me, when I see someone that has or best offer price or best offer, it says to me. And this is not my final opinion here. I have more to say, but it says to me that here's my price, but I'm not really that confident in it. I'm not really confident I can get that much. So here's a little bailout plan in case I can't get that much. To to me, if I see a if I see a listing and it has or best offer and I don't make an offer, I feel like I'm paying too much. Yeah. That's what I feel. Right. I also feel like most people and these are just my critiques i'm not saying don't do best offer I, I feel like a lot of people that do use best offer inflate their price inflate their price yeah making it almost impossible to sell at full price right and we that actually brings up another comment that we saw concerning offers someone said remember when listing on poshmark to make sure you list higher so you have room to accept an offer and that I know, I understand that a lot that, of that's how Poshmark works for them. Exactly. But we are not solely Poshmark. We're not majority Poshmark. We're hardly Poshmark at all, really. Yeah, we we don't have time to. I mean, I guess we would, but we would lose our sanity if we were always having to consider these offers from Poshmark. And I, I could tell you though, when I when I first started, when I first started doing this eBay thing, like seriously. Um, I had offers except, you know, our best offer on everything pretty much. And I, even when the store was a lot smaller, I might have like, I might've had like 500 or less items mm -hmm. and all every day, all day I was fielding offers. And I, I wasn't, I definitely was not in the shed at the time, but, and I don't, I don't know a lot about the goings on back then. I distinctly remember him complaining about that. Um, just constantly getting message for best offers. Yeah. Yeah. You get so. constantly getting offers and you that's going to happen because you have best offer turned on. Now the good thing is now I'm I'm talking about negatives here. The good thing is it is activity. Right. And you get a chance to sell stuff. I do think if you have best offer on, I think you're going to sell more stuff. So, you're going to work harder at it too. You're going <laughs> to work harder and like if you have thousands and thousands of items, you're you be ready to be on top of your messaging. You are going to get a lot of offers. Yeah. And a lot of times you're going to sell stuff probably cheaper than you should. Yeah. Because like, especially if you're having, and I've been there having a slow sales day, you got something up for 50 and you haven't made a sale yet today and somebody offers you 30 and you really shouldn't take that little, but you're like, I really want to make a sale. So you, you get that sale by accepting the offer. It, it, it invites a lot of temptation, which sales are always good. Yeah. Not, But I don't know. I feel like it end, you end up shortchanging yourself a lot with best offers. Yeah. Now, having said all of that, I haven't been accepting offers for a long time or putting best offer we on. We have not been putting it on the listings. We do still sometimes take offers through messaging. Right. Yeah. But that's the change I want to talk about because I think it's a mistake at this point because eBay isn't eBay sales aren't what they once were. Right. And we do want more sales. Yeah. So I think we're about to probably have to bite the bullet 
And I've always said this when I've talked about offers in the past. If if I feel like we need them, I will turn them on. I think I'm thinking about turning them back on, mm -hmm. but not across the board. Not across the board. Coming up with some threshold like I do not want to take offers on things that are like twenty dollars, fifteen dollars, ten dollars, five dollars. But well, yeah, <laughs> definitely that. But but I don't want like. I think if you just if we come up with a threshold for where we want to start dealing with with that kind of stuff yeah maybe it's what maybe it's 60 yeah 50, 60 dollars or, or 50 yeah. dollars plus or whatever you could just order your um your your, listings, your yeah. active listings and then go in and bulk at it and add offers to them mm -hmm. um and yeah you can do set up the auto reject thing i don't really want to do that though because if I'm going to deal with an offer, I want to actually deal with it. And sometimes the market changes. You know, we listed something a year ago that was selling for or, 100 true. and now it might be going for 50 Right. And we don't have any idea because we haven't had to list anything. So if someone sends you an offer, maybe you'll kind of search, hey, what are these selling for now? This right. has been listed a while. Yeah. You know? And that's the thing. Like, if, if something's been up for a year for $100 and it hadn't sold... Well, maybe normally I wouldn't be willing to take fifty dollars on that thing, but if it's been up a year, maybe I would. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm prepared, and I, and the lesson here is not about offers; it's about I think changing with the times, changing with the times, and keeping an open mind and being willing to try things, even if in the past you didn't think it was a good idea, mm -hmm. revisiting things and and thinking okay now do i think it's a good idea have things changed or has my thinking changed or was i wrong before let me revisit this and look at it again like i think it's important to keep an open mind like that and not just make decisions and then close your i, I see like i see a lot of resellers candace like in facebook groups and on youtube they are stubborn, man. They resellers. Have the way they do things, and they're not flexible. Right. Resellers yeah. are a stubborn bunch. Yeah. Stubborn, proud bunch. I think because there's so many variables of how you can run this business, and people, uh, of course, think their way is the best way. Sure, of course. You know? And so, a lot of times, people don't want to admit, "Hey, maybe I was wrong." Or Are, pe people, maybe, I, I, some I've people done, don't like change. I've done this too. Like, I will, like, I've, I found myself in the past. I will, I will spend ten times the effort defending the way I do something versus one times the effort actually looking at considering considering. Okay, what if you know? Yeah. And you know, open mindedness is just a huge huge benefit and not thinking not always having to be right or being an expert and that's why we I, I think a majority of people and it's just human nature they're quick to shut down mm -hmm. change because it, it's admitting that you might have been wrong about something right now there are people that are fine with it they they recognize you know that they may have done something wrong or there's some flaws with the way they do things but some people just it's just human nature it's to like shut Fon it down. like Fonzie <laughs> on happy days remember when he uh remember he he did something to i think he did something to uh richie cunningham or something happened or he ended up having to apologize he's like he's like i was ruh, 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 ruh. he couldn't even <laughs> say he was wrong out, yeah. right so uh yeah so anyway all that to say um we have not been accepting offers but i think probably tomorrow we'll go into the store and take a look take a look and maybe we, we need some rules and and like a specified framework on how we're going to do it maybe it's only items that are over a certain dollar amount that have been listed a certain amount of time too right because taking offers in the first week might be a poor poor choice or the first month your know, first month you might be able to get full price then and not get hassled about it yeah right so maybe maybe it's a, like every wednesday whenever we're i'm doing the cross posting you can go in to ebay and and then that same time period that i'm cross posting see yeah maybe you can go in and see which ones we want to add best offer to mm -hmm. 
that might not be a bad bad way to do it huh yeah, yeah. moving forward but then of course initially we'll have to do a look back at all the inventory that's currently listed on ebay right which will be easy yeah and there's not that many things because like our, on a given day what maybe we list two or three or four things that are sixty dollars or more like yeah. most of our things like even this this thing or thing right here candace lists that thing at 35 or 40 dollars uh probably not going to accept offers on that it, yeah here's the thing about your more expensive items are also going to be sometimes more a long tail right so i don't know i think you just have to kind of evaluate item by item at that point you know yeah i agree i agree so i, I am opening my mind to best offer again where it was closed before and some of that does have to do with store performance because i don't care how much we sold or made like a year ago i care how much we sell or make tomorrow right we can ex we can affect that you, you know can't let pride get in your way of making money that's right yeah that's right all right so uh yeah i'm gonna go finish these hats ken's gonna do whatever she's doing i'm gonna curl my hair your hair is already kind of curly. Oh, that's right. You've been doing it kind of fancy, huh? I had to get ready for my rock and roll concert last night. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, speaking of that, I was curious, like, before we went to that show, to the Cure show. You like, said we weren't going to talk about it anymore. Well, I know, but what the average age is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> there was a lot of gray hair yeah, at that and show. Yeah, and bald heads. I didn't feel... <laughs> I like normally going to a concert at, at our age. We would feel old. We did not feel old. We I don't. All the younger people <laughs> were like golf. Which yeah. Just to be expected. Yeah, but there weren't that many of them. No. It was mostly old. It was mostly old farts like us. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> Art, like fifty and over. Yeah. Right, or maybe they brought their kids with them yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. All right, but that's going to be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see y'all again very soon. Bye, y'all. Bye.